Hi, uh, this is Lance from LangChain. This is the fourth video on Lang's Myth Evaluations. So in video one, we kind of laid out why evals are interesting and important. Video two, we talked about the Langsmith primitives, like the core foundational pieces to understand about Langsmith evaluation. And we just talked about data set creation. Um, we talked about an example of building a question answer pair data set from this blog post on that recent Databricks LLM. Um, so again, we showed how to build like a manually curated uh, data set. Here's our question, here's our inputs and our outputs. Um, we use the SDK to build the data set and to update it. We also showed how to use the UI. Now, a question might ask is, okay, that's great, but what if I have an app in production? I have traces being, you know, logged over to, um, to Langsmith. How to build a data set based on, for example, user logs. So for example, let's say there's a bunch of generations or user inputs that thought were interesting. I want to build a data set from those so I can do future evaluations against it. So let's do a kind of a toy example here. Let's create a new project. We'll call this DBRX. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to load that blog post. Here we go. So the same blog post we've been working with on the, on the recent Databricks model. Now I'm going to define, here's my little toy app. So it's just answer a question. I'm using just OpenAI API. I'm not using LangChain at all here. Really simple. Answer the user question based on two or three sentences, given the context. That's really it. There we go. So let's say this is like an app. I have this in production somewhere. Users are just interacting with it. Um, and I get a question. here. What are the main differences in training efficiency? And yeah, I'll, they have answers. Here's another one. Cool. So let's actually go over. And we created uh, a, a project for this. Move this over. So go to my projects. So you can see those two generations that I just ran here are going to be logged to this project, DBRX. So now we're in this project and we see those two generations. You can look at the time. It matches roughly the time that is right now, Pacific. That's great. So, you know, okay, this is what we just saw. This is actually kind of interesting to look at. So here you can see this is the trace effectively. So in this case, the trace only has a single run. So again, we talked about there's runs and runs roll up into traces. Trace contains all the different runs in a given like application. In this case, it's a simple prompt response. So there's only a single run. And indeed, the trace only has that single run in it. So again, you can kind of look over here. Here's your system prompt. It plums in that whole blog post. And, you know, the human prompt, where, what here's the question and then the output. So very simple. Now, let's say these are examples of user, user interaction with your app. You want to capture them for posterity or for evaluation or whatever. Just click on the two. So we're in Langsmith now, um, and you see this thing down here, add data set. So I click on that, um, I'm gonna move this over. So I'm gonna call this a new data set. Let's just call it like DBRX uh, QA testing. Testing, there we go. Now it's automatically flagged as a chat data set. Recall previously we built a key value data set based with basically question, answer, uh, key value pairs for the inputs and outputs. In this case, this is derived from chat session. So it's a bit a different data set type. And this is useful, for example, if you want something like fine tuning in the future, the inputs are already in chat and serialized chat message format, which is useful for, for that, which that's a more advanced use case we'll talk about later. <laughs> so, you know, that's really it. We can just hit create. And I'm going to go down to my data sets. And let's just search DBRX, boom, and here it is. You can see it's a chat data set. It's derived from those inputs that my mock user provided. Um, and you get the output. So it's kind of basically a set of input prompt, output pairs from my app, which I've now saved to the data set, which I could do work on uh, accordingly. And again, just like before, you can see you can edit these. So for example, here's a really good use case. You have a bunch of user um, you know, interactions or inputs to your system, but your system produced the wrong answers. If you want to turn this into like an eva eval set, you can actually edit these to be ground truth answer, but you still have the real user inputs in there. So it's just a very kind of common trick for building high quality evaluation sets uh, is to do this kind of logging and then potentially to clean the answers provided by the AI so I set there then ground truth. So that's really it. So again, if I zoom all the way back out, what did we do? We just showed how to build data sets from user logs 
from this little toy app that I built that's asking, answering questions about a blog post. So we're going to be kind of building on this in, in some future videos. But what we've really covered here is the ability to build data sets from logs and uh, manually curate them from like question answer pairs, or it can really doesn't have to be question answer pairs, but in that case, in this case, I did. Um, but you know, developer curated versus in this particular case, you know, logs from a hypothetical user. So two different ways of building data sets. Thanks.